What's up, millennials? So what does ARK Invest see in the company Archer exactly, which is an EV tile company that is going to be acquired by the SPAC that is currently trading under the ticker symbol ACIC? Well, in this video, what we're going to do is we are going to take a look at the valuation of Archer according to the SPAC and the company themselves to see if they are undervalued or overvalued at this moment in time. But before we start, I have not done extensive research about this company just yet. I'm only going to take a look at the valuation according to the company and comparing that with other companies out there. Also, don't trust me, verify me. I'm just documenting my journey here. I'm not a financial expert, so everything I'm showing you could be entirely wrong. But if you want to have access to the Excel sheet that I'm going to use today, then you can also join our Discord, which is free to join. If you go to nasami.com slash Discord, you can actually leave your name, leave your email address, and you're going to get access to it. Before we jump into the valuation of this company, let's first take a very brief look of what Archer is exactly. As we can see here in the investor presentation of Archer and of the SPAC, this is an EV tall company. EV tall stands for electric vertical takeoff and landing. So they make these beautiful aircrafts look pretty dope actually. And they, according to the SPAC and according to the company, are pretty affordable actually, comparable to an Uber X. They also provide faster trips compared to a car. They say that they are quieter than a helicopter. And they also claim that they have zero emissions because, of course, they're an electric company or an electric aircraft, right? Ark Invest also bought shares of this SPAC, which could actually be added at some point to their space ETF when they launch it. The thing is, however, if we go to page number 44, we can see that they currently have only a, well, they don't really have a lot of manufacturing going on just yet. It's going to take quite a while before they reach a high volume of aircrafts produ produced. Difficult word to say. The manufacturing facility is going to be opened in 2022. And in 2026 or after 2026, they expect to have a high volume of manufacturing, okay? There is no merger day just yet, but they do expect to close this merger somewhere in Q2 of this year. Let's now take a look at the pro forma valuation. As almost all specs, they started out with a share price of $10 per share. So I've put that in the Excel sheet over here. The amount of outstanding shares after the merger is going to be 375 million shares outstanding. So that's the number I put over here. So that means we can already calculate the pro forma market cap based on a share price of $10 per share, which is simply by taking that $10, multiplying it by the amount of outstanding shares, and then you're going to arrive at a pro forma market cap, as it's called, of about $3.75 billion. But then we can also see that in trading view, well, they currently are uh, trading at $17.90. So uh, that means that it's slightly higher right now. $17.90 means that the current pro forma market cap is 6.7 billion, which is already quite a big jump actually, uh, even higher than eHang or even I think two times as high as eHang, which had a pretty <laughs> bad week this week. But the thing is, they're also going to have about $1 billion in cash on their balance sheet, as we can see over here, $1.037 billion. So that means that we can take that market cap, pro forma market cap of $6.7 billion, take off the amount of net cash, which is $1 billion more or less, and that is going to leave us with an enterprise value of $5.7 billion almost, which is like the company, how much the company is worth based on this share price. So... Uh, based on $17.90 per share, Archer, the company right now, is already worth $5.7 billion without even producing a lot. Let's now take a look at the fair equity value and the fair enterprise value. First of all, we're going to take a look at the enterprise value. So that is simply what Archer is actually worth. We're going to need two numbers for this. First of all, we're going to need a revenue number or an EBITDA number. And secondly, we're going to need an EBITDA or a revenue multiple. For this example, for this method we're going to be using today, we're going to look at the EBITDA and an EBITDA multiple. The EBITDA is relatively straightforward. We're going to be looking at the numbers for, for 2026, because right now, of course, we don't really have a lot of numbers to work with because they're not really produ producing anything. So in 2026, they expect to make 500 aircrafts. That is going to give them $2.2 billion in revenue. And that is going to give them $647 million in EBITDA. Okay, $647 million in EBITDA. Keep that in mind. 
So that is the first number we're going to use, but now we're going to look for a fair multiple we can actually use. Here we can see what the EV to EBITDA ratios are for similar companies, but also for Archer. They say we right now, based on a share price of $10 per share, have an EV to EBITDA ratio of 4.2x. How did they arrive there? Well, they took their current enterprise value based on the share price of $10 per share, which is $2.713 billion. And they divided that by the amount of EBITDA in 2026. So just like we said before, if we scroll back up a little bit, we saw that that was 647 million. So if you take this number for a 2.713 billion, divide that by 0.647 billion, that is going to give you exactly the uh, EV to EBITDA ratio of 4.2x. Okay, very well. But what is a fair multiple for this company? Well, they compare themselves with similar companies out there from disruptive mobility technology companies to purpose-built EV companies to shared, economic, uh, shared economy companies and other comparable companies. Now, I've been looking at these companies and I think that eHang, for example, could be a good company, but they're looking at the numbers of 2022, which is not very fair if you're looking at uh, 2026 numbers for your own companies. So this is a little bit difficult to use. Galactic, pretty much the same thing. This is in looking at 2023 numbers. We should be looking at 2026 numbers. QuantumScape is quite a different company, I would say, compared to Archer. So I'm not going to be looking at that either. Tesla is a very different company as well. I do think Proterra Canoe Arrival are a little bit more similar and the years that they are looking at, 2025 and 2024, are a little bit closer to 2026 as well. So I could make the case that we could be looking at these multiples to arrive at a fair multiple in the end. Then with regards to shared economy, they compare themselves with Airbnb. I don't think that's a very fair multiple, to be honest with you. But also at companies like Lyft, Uber and Blade. I do think these could be fair um, companies to, to look at. And also they're looking at 2026 numbers, which seems pretty fair to me as well. And then the other comparable numbers, well, it's a little bit different uh, yeah, from EV infrastructure and LiDAR technology companies. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take or I'm going to arrive at a fair multiple basing my calculations of the multiples of Proterra, Canoe, Arrival, Lyft, Uber and Blade. How are we going to do that? Well, we're simply going to take these multiples of these six companies. So Proterra has 11.4, Canoe has 6.9, uh, Arrival has 5. Lyft has 15.7, Uber has 13.7, and Blade has 2.9. I'm simply going to take the average of these six companies. So that is going to provide us with an average multiple, average EV2 EBITDA multiple of 9.23, or sorry, 9.27x, okay? Sounds pretty okay to me, sounds pretty okay. So what we could do now is instead of using exactly this number, we could give ourselves a range of multiples. I'm going to make this a little bit subjective, of course. You can take another multiple. If you think a multiple should be higher or lower, you can always take that multiple in your calculations. But I'm going to go with a range of 8x and 10x on the high end. So 8x on the low end, 10x on the high end. Okay, so we now have our EBITDA of 647 million actually scroll down because I've already put it in my Excel sheet over here. An EBITDA of 647 million, a low multiple of 8x, a high multiple of 10x. Well, if you do these calculations, if you go to this Excel sheet over here, we scroll up a little bit, we pull up our calculator again, and we take that EBITDA of 647 million, we first multiply it by the low multiple of 8x. That is going to give you a low enterprise value of $5.176 billion, which is the number that's also present over here in the Excel sheet. Okay, so that's not one number. We can also do that with the high multiple of 10x. So that is simply going to give you an enterprise value of $6.47 billion. Okay, that's the number over here. And then you can also say, well, the average between these two numbers is something we're going to call the midpoint valuation. So that is simply the average of 5.2 billion and 6.5 billion, 
which is an enterprise value of $5.8 billion. Very well. So now we have these enterprise values. We can now also arrive at a fair market cap because these are the fair enterprise values. So the company is worth, according to these calculations, between 5.1 billion and 6.5 billion. But if we want to arrive at a fair market cap, we need to add back the amount of net cash that are going to have on their balance sheet. Earlier in this video, we said that that is going to be a little bit more than $1 billion. So if you take these enterprise valuations, if you add back the amount of net cash, you're going to arrive at these fair market caps. For the low end, that is 6.2 billion, or the midpoint valuation, 6.86 billion, and for the high valuation, 7.5 billion. Now we can also go one step further and arrive at a fair price per share. Because now we know these market caps, we know the amount of outstanding shares after the merger, which is going to be 375 million. So we can simply take these market caps, divide them by the amount of outstanding shares, and then you're going to arrive at these fair prices per share. So for the low end, you would arrive at a fair price per share of $16.57. For the midpoint valuation, you would arrive at a dollar amount of $18.29. And for the high valuation, you would arrive at a price per share of $20.02. So a fair midpoint price per share could be $18.29, which would mean that our share currently is fairly valued. However, don't trust me, verify me, always check what I'm doing. I'm just documenting my journey here. I'm not an expert. And always keep in mind as well that we are taking a look at assumptions. We've taken a look at a predicted revenue number, a predicted EBITDA. We've applied a certain EBITDA multiple. You can make it higher, you can make it lower, whatever you want. But take into account, these are assumptions, these can change. And if you change one of these variables, then the entire calculation is going to change and your fair price per share is going to change as well. With that being said, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.